Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Leslie and welcome to my channel. And a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed. Yay! Um, if you saw my last video, you know that I wanted to spend a lot of time developing a new style while I was on vacation. So today I am going to be showing the first step I took for that. The narration is actually going to explain the video on the screen. Yay! I think creating a unique art style can be really challenging. Um, it's easy to avoid looking like a particular artist thanks to the internet, but with so many styles out there, it's also easy to unintentionally mimic an artist style. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend that whatever I come up with is never before seen or never done before. Uh, it will be new to me, however, and hopefully I'll put enough of my own taste into it so it doesn't get lost in the masses as I continue to develop it. Before I dive into the details of what I'm going for, uh, let me give you a little backstory on my journey as an artist. So my friends uh, peer pressured me into using a tablet to draw uh, in 2011. Um, since then I've experimented with a range of styles from realistic to anime to whatever this is. Well, I've enjoyed exploring different techniques. Um, I always felt like my art has been inconsistent. I love artists that have a consistent, recognizable style, and I want that for myself as well. I want something I can rely on that allows me to put more energy into the concept uh, and like the idea, themes, or whatever of the image I'm working on. Okay, so jumping into the actual image. I didn't really have uh, direct references or inspirations for this, but I can see some influences from artists like Rose Besh or Mitachi Sato. Um, yeah, for some reason this image has just been like burned into my head. <laughs> I think about it a lot, so I think um, I kind of indirectly thought about it or referenced it when I made this. I've actually been looking at a lot of Japanese illustrators recently, and I think because of that I really wanted to go for a saturated look. Uh, that being said, my main inspiration for color in general comes from my love of vibrant colors and the way they can bring out emotion and energy from its viewers. When I look at the afternoon sky or paintings by artists like Yumin Art and Kath Pun, I become mesmerized by how the colors blend together and create this trance-like feeling. It's really hard to explain, but I feel like I'm in another world when I look at paintings and scenery like this. So going back to my own work, when I started this piece, uh, I decided to go with grayscale and then use a gradient map because it's the quickest way to test a variety of colors without worrying too much about values. I knew I wanted to include green, purple, and blue into the shadow areas, but I really struggled with finding hues and shades that really fit. When I went in to edit the video, the amount of time like for me editing the gradient map and trying different things took about like an hour it was so i could not i couldn't believe how long it took um but yeah it was just it was really difficult and one thing that did kind of help me was staying in kind of like the warm like the reds orange yellow that area and then going to like the gray side so that gave me more of like a cool um tone or a cool hue without it clashing too much with the rest of the color. But in the end, I just decided to focus more on the shadow colors of the local color, like the brown, and then add the other colors later. And that's actually one of the biggest challenges I face when developing this new style, um, just finding the right balance of colors. As I just mentioned, um, I couldn't really fit all of the colors I wanted into the gradient map, so I opted to add them on separate layers. I really struggled with this because too many colors can be overwhelming and distract from the portrait. At the same time, too few colors can make it feel a little flat and lifeless. So I had to find ways to subtly blend the different hues together uh, by playing with the opacity for each layer and then testing different layer modes. It took a lot of trial and error to find the balance that I was looking for and in the end, like looking back, I still don't think I got to where I want to be, but I'll figure the rest out later. So here you can see me starting to add the different colors for like the highlights, the glasses, uh, eventually the lips and everything. Um, it's way easier to do this um, on a separate layer than on a gradient map, just so I can get like a particular color for each item. Even after finishing this portrait, um, I'm not sure if I want to include lines in my final style, 
I've been thinking of different techniques and coming up with other options and also asking others their opinion on which one they like better. Speaking of that, by the way, uh, if you want more live updates on what I've been doing and if you want to give me feedback, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, mainly my stories. I haven't really been posting on my grid too much uh, lately. Or you can check out my Patreon, uh, both will be linked below. Um, so the last thing I wanted to touch on was the different rules that I followed while I was doing this, which are using cold tones for the shadows, placing red around the cheeks, eyes, and mouth, and adding highlights and brightest values to the oily, <laughs> oiliest parts of the skin. Oh, that was hard. Anyway, um, shout out to Big Bro Cynics for pointing that out on his skin tutorial. Um, I knew like the highlights of the face, like the nose and the um, over the brow, the forehead, but I never realized that oil played a part in this. And when I saw that video, it, everything made sense. Like I made some adjustments if you caught it in the video and it really made a difference. So yeah, you should check out his videos. You probably didn't need me to tell you because you've probably seen them, but oh well. When it comes to like the overall head and face, I usually put like the brightest, brightest, like super white highlight on the eyes. But since the person is facing away in this case, I place them on the skin. In the end, I didn't make a fully polished portrait, but my overall goal for this was to experiment, play, and have fun. I want to focus less on technique and let creativity take the front seat, but not the wheel though, because that spot's reserved for Jesus. Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> anyway, I hope this video um, has been helpful in one way or another. My goal for this series is to document one of the avenues an artist can take to find a new style so others can get inspired or have a template to experiment and meld the results into their own journey. I don't know what the end result will be, so if there are only three videos in this series about a year from now, just know that I failed and I work at a convenience store or McDonald's, but hopefully this will lead to a cool outcome. And with that said, thank you for watching and joining me on this journey of discovering my new art style. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Insta, check out my Patreon, clean my house, buy me dinner, etc. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.